This is the unsolved disappearance of Melinda Boyd. The disappearance of Melinda still remains an unsolved mystery. Over a hundred years ago, oral history has been told by the elder. Is that Melinda Borden was an unlisted passenger above the Titanic. She was traveling as a personal caregiver and with an independent European contractor. Of course, we must listen to the elders. Just listening to the elders lets you take a journey through their minds. And it's like walking through a library because they have ancestors' knowledge, because they have old untold stories. This is Black Cock Titanic. Hit that like button, share, and subscribe. And I'm here for a particular reason. The reason is, I'll show it you guys later, but I brought the INS with me. So you guys know what that means. We're drinking a little bit. That 13.5 is going to have us feeling good tonight. Listen, guys, I want you guys to drink with me, toast with me, to the thousands of you have already placed your order and um, received your bottles. You guys, enjoy with me. Kapitwe Nawate. Love by all. Thank you guys for the support. And um, I'm about to get out here in New York. I'm about to enjoy. So here's Tank and um, his dad had the nerve to pull a pole out on, on Melody's motherhood because he had on this chain. But he doesn't have a problem with Lilla Knox having on a chain. I don't know what's the difference. And furthermore, he may want to just be like his father. His father had this big chain around his neck while he was working out. So it's not unusual that children would imitate their dad. But what is the difference? Why is he attacking Melody and not Lilla Knox? Lilla Knox have always had that chain around his neck. And I have complained about that cha chain around Lilla Knox's neck simply because I work in ICU. Babies come in ICU from the, uh, being choked. They can choke, yeah. They pull that, that, that chain off and try to eat it and swallow it. And sometimes the chain break and little sharp pieces get stuck all in their neck. What if they're chewing on it also? But what's the difference between Lilla Knox wearing a chain and he's not going after coleslaw? But he will go after Melody for the older son wearing chains around his neck. Um, my reaction was just like, oh, okay. I didn't really think too much into it, honestly. I did not. Seeing the picture, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Because I was like, you know, he has the recent move, Joe Biden has literally turned his back on Black America, and he has done this by officially withdrawing his support for Black farmers through repealing Section 1005 of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, stripping Black farmers of a very much needed debt relief program that will inevitably lead to the foreclosures of the last remaining Black farmers in America. With the repealing of Section 1005, because of Joe Biden, this decade will be known as the last decade of Black farmers. 
And before Biden supporters hop in the comment section saying, yeah, but it was white conservative farmers who initially got the funds locked up in litigation through lawsuits, which prevented black farmers from being able to access it, though that may be true when it was Biden's time to shine and fight for those black farmers. He opted not to. And I'm going to prove that to you right now by playing a quick news segment from my other YouTube channel that black farmers have been dealing with for over a century in America. In a recent comment, Boyd stated, I was sure hoping they would appeal. They are not laying out a clear definition of what black farmers have experienced at USDA for decades and are not responding to that in various courts. You can't stand here and not acknowledge discrimination that still exists today. It's a formula for failure. The history of discrimination is not being spelled out clearly enough by the Department of Justice and USDA. So as you can clearly see, Biden never had any intention on seriously fighting for black farmers and has instead opted to carry on the legacy of anti-black discrimination in which he has now repealed the debt relief program, while at the same time he has found a way to send over $100 million to farmers in the Ukraine. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a quick moment to look at the legacy of anti-black discrimination against black farmers in order for us to understand the magnitude of Biden's betrayal. And to assist me in doing that, I'll be reading from an article by Market Watch titled, Black Farmers Lost $326 Billion in Land Over Eight Decades. Stalled Debt Relief Could Mean the Next Wave of Losses. Decades of Discrimination. The threat posed to black farm ownership is part of a long-running historical trend. While black farm ownership rose in the decades after the Civil War brought an end to slavery, the number of black farmers in the U.S. have fallen sharply and disproportionately over the last century, research shows. Black farmers owned around 16 million acres by 1910 and accounted for more than 14% of producers. The latest census of agriculture in 2017 estimated black farm ownership at around 4.7 million acres and black farmers at less than 2% of all farmers. So as you can see, black people disproportionately voted for Biden and he turns a blind eye to black families. That has frozen debt relief funds intended to provide aid for black farmers as well as other farmers of color. While Biden's Department of Justice made it a point to file an appeal within hours to defend the administration's high profile priorities in areas like immigration as reported by Politico, this time around, Biden allowed the 60-day appeal period to run out. Neil Devins, a professor of law and government at William & Mary Law School, stated, It's very unusual not to defend a statute that you support. Maybe they fear a more consequential loss. When Biden's press secretary, Jen Psaki, was asked if the administration was exploring other methods to provide the farmers with debt relief, Psaki's answer was less than comforting as she passed the buck over to the Department of Agriculture and quickly moved on to the next question. And I have a question on Section 1005 of the American Rescue Plan, which is the debt relief for farmers of color. Mm -hmm. This has obviously been mired now down in, I believe, 13 lawsuits. Um, these, obviously, these farmers are still need debt relief. Is the administration exploring any other ways of getting um, these resources to farmers of color under this program or under an alternative scheme to the administration? Well, as you noted, there is active litigation, and obviously we had proposed plans to provide uh, assistance uh, to these farmers, and hence, and, and there's active litigation that's ongoing, but uh, I can convey to you that our uh, commitment is to certainly help these farmers. I would point you to the Department of Agriculture for any more specifics about their programs, but I know that equity is central to their objectives, and certainly is part of how they, um, how they um, orchestrate uh, any of their programs. Uh, Go ahead. A USDA spokesman recently addressed the current situation, stating the United States government will continue to fight these lawsuits in the district courts in the weeks and months ahead because providing debt relief is an important component of USDA's broader commitment to taking bold historic action to root out generations of systemic racism. But for they are happy to hear you talk about law for the oppressor because this disarms the Negro and fit into the stereotype of the Negro that they meet turning the other cheek or the preacher. Would you care to comment on the directors? I must confess that uh, that dream that I had that day has in many points turned into a nightmare. I must confess that uh, 
That dream that I had that day has a many points turned into a nightmare. Turned into a nightmare. Turned into a nightmare. Turned into a nightmare. That dream that I had that day has a many points turned into a nightmare. You're goddamn right. You know the uh so this is Martin Luther King talking about reparations. At the very same time that America refused to give the Negro any land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. Not only that, they provided county agents to further their expertise in farming. Not only that, they provided low interest rates in order that they could mechanize their farms. Not only that, Today, many of these people are receiving millions of dollars in federal subsidies not to farm, and they are the very people telling the black man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. <laughs> There you have it. I miss one. Martell hopes I miss one. Hit that like button. Share and subscribe. Remember, eagles flies with eagles. All right, now hit the like button. Share and subscribe. This is Arthur Oma. And remember, eagles fly with eagles.